Today, we will be talking to Mary and Joseph as they make their way from Nazareth to Bethlehem. We've already seen some miraculous things in the appearance of an angel to Elizabeth and Mary and Joseph to tell them about some wonderful things that were going to happen. And we've seen the miraculous pregnancies of Elizabeth and Mary. So let's go visit with Mary and Joseph. We've been on our journey for several days. The decree from Caesar Augustus has sent Mary and Joseph south to Bethlehem because Joseph is from the house of David. We've made it as far as Bethel and have a few more days to travel. We found a place to go inside for this interview. So Mary, how are you feeling? I'm doing fine. The trip has been hard, but most of it's behind us now. It's a very exciting time for us. We are traveling with a group for safety, so people have been really helpful. Joseph, we've made it from Nazareth down through the Valley of Jezreel, then up to Samaria and Shechem, then through Shiloh and now to Bethel. How are you dealing with all of this? I know that I'm going where God wants me to go and doing what God wants me to do, so I'm doing fine. Except he never stops to ask for directions. Really? I'm just concerned for Mary and how all this is affecting her physically. I've been traveling with you because I'm fascinated with your story. Do you know what's coming next? We don't have to know what is coming next, as long as we do what God wants us to do today. He will continue to lead us day by day. It is a lot more crowded than I thought it would be, but we are going through Jerusalem, so maybe a lot of people will stop there. I'm concerned about finding a place to stay once we get to Bethlehem. Mary could have this baby any time in the next couple of weeks. It is not a large town, and David has a lot of descendants. So, what are you going to do if you can't find a place to stay? We have trusted God to take care of us so far, and we will continue to trust Him. We don't believe that God would choose us to do this if He did not already have a place in mind where His Son will be born. We just don't know where that is yet. Like I said, we are just following Him day by day. We should be there in just a few days, and I believe we will see then what the living arrangements will be. Surely God will want His Son to be born in some place really nice. After the less than ideal places we've stopped along the way, it will be good to have a comfortable place to sleep. This is exciting. Everything we've talked about up to this point has been, in, been leading up to this special event. It's a wonderful event. It's a historic event. It's a blessed event. And it's a unique event. Let's get to it. We have had an exciting last few days. Let me set the stage for you. We arrived in Bethlehem and it sure was crowded. That comfortable place I was hoping for was not to be. We tried many different places to stay, but no one had room for us. Mary and Joseph found a stable to stay in simply because it looked like Mary could have that baby any time. I just found a spot nearby to sleep and spent most of my time following this amazing story. Well, we'd not been here too long when it became clear that the time for Mary to have her baby was near. I stayed inside with them for a while, but as the time got close, they sent me outside. Not that I minded. The birth of a child is for the family. The baby was actually born a few hours ago, and I'm waiting for a chance to go in and interview Mary and Joseph, as well as to see the Son of God. What will I ask? What can I ask? Everything is unfolding in such a way that I know this is a historical occasion. Historical is not even a strong enough word for what's happened. If this truly is the Son of God, what does that even mean? Will he be a military leader? We've been oppressed by the Romans for so long, it would be great to have someone deliver us from their power over us. Will he be a political leader? Maybe his great wisdom will allow him to work through the Roman government to provide solutions for us during this time. Will he be a religious leader? It seems as if our leaders have become so entrenched in tradition that religious laws control practically everything we do. It would be nice to have someone show us that God can be loving and kind and not just a judge. None of these questions will be answered today, of course, because he's just a baby. I've heard him cry, just like all babies do. But it's interesting to think that we are living in a time when God may be living here on earth with us. And what do I say when I see him? 
Will he look different than other babies? Or will he look like a god? Or even an angel like the one that visited them or Elizabeth earlier? How will Mary and Joseph be different now that Jesus has been born? They told me that's what they're naming him. Will they have some kind of holy help to assist them in raising the Son of God? I can't believe how nervous I am waiting to go in and see him. This has been a 15-month story that I've been following, and now the baby I've heard about is finally here. I make my living using words and asking questions, but at this moment, I'm overwhelmed, and I'm at a loss for anything to ask or say. It is truly an humbling feeling to think that just inside that door is the Son of God. I only hope that I can... You can come in now. This week, we're still at the manger. Others have heard of the birth of Jesus and have come to visit. They are lowly shepherds, though I wouldn't call them that to their faces. It seems as if many things about this amazing story are not happening as I would have planned it. I guess God knows what he's doing, though. Now, you're one of the shepherds that have come to visit the newborn child. Tell me how you knew to come here. It was the wildest thing. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. I'm not sure I even believe it myself. Well, just go ahead and tell me what happened. So far, I've heard stories about messenger angels, seen two women who should not be having babies pregnant, and seen a baby that I now believe is the Son of God. Is your story stranger than that? Well, I guess not. We were out in the fields watching our sheep earlier tonight. Then the sky got bright and we saw an angel appear. We were scared and we don't scare easily. Sometimes we have to deal with wild animals, but this was totally different. The angel told us not to be afraid. Then he told us that a Savior, the Messiah, was born in Bethlehem. We were told to look for a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Then an amazing thing happened. There was a group of angels praising God in front of us. I've never seen anything like it. So we decided to come here right away. And I'm just waiting my turn to go inside and see him now. So you actually saw angels and they told you to come here? We saw more angels than we have sheep, but only one of them told us to come here. The rest of them were just praising God in the most amazing voices I've ever heard. I've been on this earth 13 years and I've never seen anything like it. Oh look, it's my turn to go in. Thanks for talking to me. Pardon me sir, could I ask you a few questions? That was amazing. Huh? What did you say? I would like to ask you a few questions. Sure. What would you like to know? Why do you think the angels announced Jesus' birth to you? Shepherds are not exactly part of high society. I know what you're saying, and we feel unworthy too. When those angels appeared, we hit our knees in fright. But there has to be a good reason that we were told. Maybe because this is the city of David, and David was a shepherd boy. That could be it. But you know that we raise these lambs that are used at the temple? That seems to be our only connection to the religious world. Maybe there is a connection between our lambs and this young child in the room. Our lambs are so pure and innocent. And this young baby is also young and innocent. Uh, tell me more about these lambs. Well, the lambs are bred to be without any spots or blemishes. If they are perfect, then people will purchase them to sacrifice them for the forgiveness of their sins. I have often thought how odd it is for us to breed lambs whose only purpose is to die for the sins of others. That is interesting. I guess since you are involved in something that has to do with the temple, maybe that is why the angels chose you. I'm just not sure how the lamb's purpose might have any significance in this situation. Wow, this has been an exciting journey. We started in Galilee and made it to Bethlehem in time for Jesus' birth. Then, eight days later, we went to Jerusalem where Jesus was dedicated to the temple. Now, we have returned to the temple for the purification offering. 
We are just outside the temple where Jesus was encountered by two people who seem to know how significant he is and will be. I'm going to talk to these two people now. Simeon, why did you come to the temple today? Well, for some reason, God has chosen to bless me with the presence of his Holy Spirit. I've been waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit had revealed to me that I would not die until I saw this take place by the coming of the Messiah. And I was led by the Spirit to come here to the temple today. So you knew that Jesus would be here today. I thought you just must have come here every day waiting. No, no. I knew that the Messiah, Jesus is his name, would be here today. And so I came in anxious anticipation as to what I would find. And then I saw Jesus and I knew that my life was complete. That They allowed me to hold the baby in my arms and I was enthralled. Well, what you said was so poetic. Could you repeat it for us? Well, sure. I said, Lord, now you're releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Well, does that mean? Well, basically what it means is I can die in peace because I have seen the one who will bring salvation to the whole world. But then I had to tell Mary that Jesus would upset the religious establishment in Israel and that the opposition to him would pierce her own soul. I'm kind of glad that I won't be around to see that. Thank you very much, Simeon. Now, we are going to talk to someone who I know has been coming to the temple every day for years. She is a prophetess named Anna. Anna, tell us about your background and your encounter with Jesus. Well, I have been a widow for a long time, and my purpose now in life is to come to the temple every day and night fasting and praying and spending time before God. This gives me fulfillment. I'm very spiritually sensitive, and I knew the Messiah was in the temple at this very moment. So I came up to him and began to speak about him to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. How did that make you feel? Well, people may have thought that I was strange because of what I was saying and how I was saying it, but I knew it was true. So I was excited. I have seen the Son of God. The Messiah has come. Hallelujah. Thank you to Simeon and Anna for their stories today. They are helping to confirm this amazing story that the Son of God is here on earth.